I like it. Yeah. It's it's a little surreal for me to be sitting here talking to you after watching your videos for so long. I'm <laughs> genuinely really excited about this. So thanks for taking the time to do this. Oh one my now. gosh, of course. Thank you for having me. I think it'll be really fun. Absolutely. Um, I noticed you are from Idaho. I have to ask you a quick question about Idaho, or if we should chat about it for just a moment. I'm actually going to Boise and Twin Falls, is it Twin Falls, and then yeah. Craters of the Moon, and then we're going to Sun Valley. I'm doing all this in October. I went a few That's years fun. ago, and I fell in love with Idaho. What are your thoughts on Idaho? Yeah, Idaho is gorgeous. I uh, My brother lives in Twin Falls right now. My sister lives in Boise, uh, and I'm from like Rexburg, Idaho, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's gorgeous. Um, I live in California now, and everybody's just moving to Idaho. My whole family's furious. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I, I noticed that when I was there before, a lot of people, a lot of the locals were like, all these Californians are jacking up our, our rates and prices. And Boise was like the hottest market in America for a while. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me just adjust something really quickly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, it is like, um, it is such a gorgeous place. It's It's so wild. It's just such a pretty pretty place. And I think that people are just getting, mm -hmm. um, they, they're finding it. It's a little gem. Yeah. It was, it was untapped and now it's starting to be uncovered. Um, mm -hmm. and you're in the San Diego area now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Training in San Diego. I love it. So I'm awesome. Super excited. Well, I can't wait to dive more into training, but Shari, you, I'm reading your media kit now, first and foremost, thank you for that. Um, what have you not accomplished? I mean, you are an American champion, American bronze medalist, Team USA athlete, Team USA captain, all US, USA all world team, British champion. I mean, what is left? My yeah, Lord. Yeah, so I, I do want to clarify with the Team USA captain um, that I'm the AAC rep. I am the representative for the heptathlon mm -hmm. um, for athletes to kind of like get their word out. Um, Cause it is a little different than like in the official USA team captain. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to like, I like, I do want to like be conscious of that it is like a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been really awesome to be able to like work with other athletes to kind of just be like, Hey, as athletes, this is what we want. And this is uh, what, what we believe. And um, this is not working for us, or this is working for us. It's been really cool to be able to represent the athletes in that way. And you're a heptathlete. Yeah, so for people, for people listening to this, can you explain exactly what that is? Yeah. So uh, the heptathlon is seven different track and field events. Um, so it's two days and it's a uh, high jump. Uh, sorry, let me start over. We start off with hurdles. We do high hurdles, high jump, shot put, and the 200, and that's day one. Then we come back, we do long jump, javelin, and the 800. Wow. I'm having a whole new respect for track and field. I did my first race ever, which was a 10K, not on the track, but it was a 10K in May. And since then, I've gotten my VO2 max tested. Have you ever had that done? I've never had my VO2 max tested at all. Um, I remember when I was training in England, uh, they had a VO2 max machine, but like, you know, when you're a competitive athlete and you've never done something before, you're kind of like, do I want to know? I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you probably would have blown me away. So I'm glad we can't compare numbers, but I feel pretty good about myself. I just did it again. And so I raised my VO2 max just a little bit these last few months. So I've really been focusing on track workouts. And that's when I came into your social media account and mm -hmm. you've done a wonderful job of, Oh, thank you. People. No, you're very, very welcome. Um, because I don't know, a lot of things that I feel like with what we'll, we'll call celebrities, right. I'll call you a celebrity is <laughs> that you can't relate to some of the things that they do, but you make it very relatable. If you break it down to the basics, you can try these one, two, three simple things that will increase your speed, increase your time. And now I go to the track. I'm right by Duke University. I go to Duke and I do your warm ups and I take Love a lot it. of tips that you say. And I think it's worked. I think I think I'm enjoying running now more because I think I'm doing it properly. There's a purpose to it. And uh, I'm watching my heart rate now and all that. So it's been it's been a blast and it's been awesome watching you. I watch your <laughs> videos all the time. So 
for anybody who is looking for help with running, getting fit, exercising, stretching, definitely go check out your social media, which is at underscore Shari Hawkins. We'll, we'll give you time to more to promote more uh, later as well. But I would love to get your backstory of how you got into, into running. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. Uh, I used to hate running with a passion. So I grew up doing like basketball, volleyball, and I was a gymnast and I was just kind of like, I did dance and I did cheerleading. And I did, I honestly, I just like did a little bit of everything. And my parents, I'm the youngest of five kids. And so my parents were just kind of like the, the people that just threw me in literally anything they could throw me in and like, just go do your best at anything that you could. And I remember my friends were all like, Hey, do you want to go do cross country? And I was like, absolutely not. Like, no, 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 no. I have volleyball during the fall. I'm not going to run for fun. That is dumb. Who would do that? (laughs) And, uh, but then all my friends were doing cross country and I'd be like, Hey, do you guys want to hang out? Or they, we'd be at lunch and they'd be talking about cross country practice. And it was honestly just like FOMO, right? Like I just was like, ah, like, I'm not really hanging out with my friends. And then when track season came out, they were like, Hey, do you want to go to the track team? And I was like, no, (laughs) but I didn't want to miss out. So I joined the track team and it's so funny because all of my friends slowly, but surely just kind of started dropping off of track and I fell in love with it and kept going. So here we are all these years later and I'm still doing, I'm doing it full time as my whole career, making a life out of it. So super cool super interesting how it how it happens but I mean if you've never done track before um I I suggest giving it a go because there's something about building you um when it comes Mm -hmm. to track because you know with basketball and volleyball like I mean there's there's techniques for specific you know you got to play with the team you got to like kind of work together because I mean I was a I honestly have always thought volleyball was my best sport um I was a setter and I loved it I loved it so much and I was always like yeah this is my sport but I mean uh I was I went to a school in Idaho and we weren't the best team ever but I felt I always felt like I was so good at volleyball but for me like with like team sports and stuff like I just felt like there was not a lot of winning going on and when I found track like it was really cool because I was able to really focus on building myself better whereas like I I have a little bit more control over how I do and my performance and all that kind of stuff yeah so. I understand that that's why people love you know like golf or and or ten- tennis if you will it, it it relies on you um I'm curious yeah. were you good from the get-go when you started track were you like oh this is a breeze or did you have to learn a lot you know, I think because I was always so involved in athletics, I was pretty good um, throughout high school. I got recruited because I was the state champion in the hurdles, high jump and long jump. So I got wow. recruited for the heptathlon. But I will say that there are a lot of girls in the U.S. that do the heptathlon and the pentathlon when they're younger. So by the time I went to college and tried out this new event, like compared to a lot of girls, like, I mean, I was definitely not where I where I should be, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, I would say. And so, um, it was something that I really had to like claw because I would say that naturally as an athlete, I'm pretty athletic, but I would say as the, as far as the heptathlon goes, like, I wouldn't say I was anything like too special as a heptathlete. It was definitely something that, I mean, I made my first team USA. I started track in, in, uh, 2010. That's when I started the heptathlon And I made my first Team USA in 2019. So it wasn't something that I was just like amazing. And uh, then, oh, making world teams and all that kind of stuff. No, that was, that was a whole process for sure. I'd love to learn just a little more about that. Um, At what point did you kind of make the call? that you are like, this is going to be my career. I'm going for it. So um, in college, I had really bad anxiety um, when it came to performance and I would just get so stressed all the time. And I realized that when school had ended, I was just like, I know that I haven't even scratched the surface of what I'm capable of in this sport. And it was a little hard because I didn't know what my next step was. 
but I knew that it couldn't like track couldn't be done for me. Like I had, I had more and I had to keep going. And so, you know, um, it was kind of just one step in front of the other trying to be like, okay, I'm going to do track. I'm going to keep doing track. And, um, when I went pro, uh, that was kind of in, that was in 2016. I joined the, the Santa Barbara track club. I joined this track club that is for, um, heptathletes and I learned a lot and then I moved to England and then I moved back to San Diego and then I moved to San Diego and it was just a lot of trial and error that like slowly but surely my track career kind of just started unfolding in front of me it's so interesting because I think that a lot of people you know they want this like roadmap to how do I make this happen and my biggest piece of advice is the how isn't as important as the what and so if you really want to do something, to accomplish something, to get a goal, um, it really isn't the, the how of how you do it isn't important because I couldn't, I couldn't have written myself this roadmap mm -hmm. if I wanted to of how everything was going to unfold. In fact, most things, um, actually almost all things, uh, were not going to be what they originally were planned on being like I wasn't planning on moving to Santa Barbara mm -hmm. I was originally going to um, have a coach that lived in Santa Barbara write workouts I was going to stay in Utah because I went to Utah State for school and I was going to train there and have him send me the workouts then we got on a phone he was like you really should move to Santa Barbara and work with my colleague who has a track club. I've talked to him. He's interested in talking to you. And then that's how I ended up going to Santa Barbara. When it was England, I was actually going to go with one of my best friends who was also a heptathlete. And she was like, you know, you should come with me to this and all this stuff. But like, I, it didn't feel, I, I, I wasn't, I don't think I was ready to do that mm -hmm. until the next year. And the next year, uh, she had already gone and she was telling me like how great it was. And I think the next year I was finally like ready to like take it on. And so I was, I was going to go to England a year before, but I ended up staying in Santa Barbara one more year and then going to England. Um, then when I came back, I wasn't going to train with the coach that I have now. I was going to train with a completely different coach in a completely different location. And then just things unfolded. So it's so interesting because so many people ask me, you know, how did you, how do I become pro? Mm -hmm. And my biggest thing is just decide that that's what you want to do and look for ways to do it. Like they're going to come, like, if that's what you want, like the ways that the, the ways, the how there it'll come to you. If the, what stays concrete in your mind. I think that translates to a lot of areas in life. And when it comes to the elite of the elite athletes, which you are, I'm always curious, like how much of this would you give credit to hard work compared to God-given abilities? Were you, do you feel that you were born to do this or was it like, no, no, I was just an average person. And I put in all the work to get here. I would say like, um, there is, there are, there are some athletes that they were born for the sport. And I mean, when you're, when you're 16 going to the Olympics, right? Like there's something special about you, you know, kind of a thing. And it doesn't mean that you don't have hard work either. It just, there's, there's something special about you when you're doing it and you're competing against 27 year olds and you're just incredible that, and I'm not going to take the fact that there are people who are so talented. I'm not going to take that away from them, but I would say that like consistency and I think that that's pretty I feel like it's pretty cliche that like consistency like hard work beats talent every time but I would mostly say consistency um and determination and a little bit of stubbornness like goes a long way because um my parents are probably the most supportive people ever um never miss a game like I mean they they drove from Idaho to Washington um, to watch me do, it was like 13 hours or 12 hours or something to watch me do a pentathlon, which is one day. And then my dad was a basketball coach. And so he, um, had a game the next night. So they just drove back wow. for the, the game the next night. Like that was, that was pretty typical and still is typical of like just what they do. Right. They're so supportive. And I remember when I said I wanted to go pro, um, I, you know, my parents, uh, we met in Vegas and we were having like a good like time, me and my parents and just chatting. 
And I told them like, Hey, like I'm going to go pro. This is where I'm going to go. And they were both like, Ooh, like, Oh, Char, like, we're so proud of you. You got your school paid for and like, you know, you graduated, but I think that, you know, like there's other things in life. Like, I don't know if we can like, you know, we won't have the finances to like support you through this. And I was like, no, don't worry. I'm not asking for financial support. Like I totally get it. Like I was just letting you know, like this is what I'm doing. And they were kind of like, yikes. But then what, then what happened is I decided that this is what I was going to do. And they drove me there and they helped me unpack. And like, they were the most supportive people ever. But basically what I'm saying is even sometimes the people who believe in you the most won't see your vision. Hmm. And the most important thing is that you have the vision for yourself to what you want to do and who you want to be. And that is the thing. Like if you've got that and, and cause my parents, they could have easily talked me out of doing it. I mean, like I said, they supported me through the whole thing. Once I decided they were like all in absolutely. And if you talk to them now, they also didn't want me to go to England. <laughs> and then I went to England and then I told them I was going to San Diego. They were like, yep, we trust you now. Like you, you did it. Good job. Mm-hmm. Um, they would have, they would totally be like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you didn't, you didn't, you didn't listen to us. We're so like, so glad you didn't listen to us. Right. Um, but this is at the end of the day, it's got to be your vision. It Mm -hmm. has to be what you want to do. And even if you're not the most talented at it, that's like the biggest thing is even if you're not the best right now, like if it's what you want to do, like you're going to find a way Mm -hmm. to get where you want to go. I couldn't agree more. I'm just thinking in my head that, you know, on a smaller scale, I can relate it to doing this podcast started two and a half years ago. I had a vision and I heard a lot of naysayers and like, yeah, whatever. But here I am, 90 episodes in, oh, talking to Shari, awesome. Shari Hawkins. I mean, who would have thought that I get to speak with you um, after oh. watching your videos? By the way, you make me so jealous watching your videos. You just like hop over these hurdles like it's nothing. Like, yeah. Well, you whatever. know what's so funny is when I was in, when I was a freshman in college, I was the worst um at these and they they would make me stay after and like learn the drills and drill them in and i wanted to stay after i wanted to learn i wanted to get better and that's the thing that's so crazy is a lot of people always say like you make it look so easy and it's like it looks easy but yeah. it's been a decade right. <laughs> of me doing these so it's it's not it's not easy and i'm sure that there are so many people who are like how do you show up for your podcast every single time like Mm -hmm. how do you stay consistent but it's like consistency is really what's going to get you to where you want to go and remembering that showing up is the the key it is and the other thing you know how you said like and I never thought I'd be talking to you like you just have to remember I'm just like a human person Mm -hmm. that like showed up every day kept wanting to go kept wanting to do it There, there are people who are you know like they're billionaires and they're famous celebrities and like all this thing that people are like, Whoa, like, ha- like that person's special, but it's like at the same time, like that person had a dream and they showed up. Right. And, and it's, it's always it's nice. A little bit of luck and then look at what happens. Cause yeah. I'm just a girl from Idaho. I guarantee everyone in my high school is probably like, how, why? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know you, you're a weirdo. Um, <laughs> why are you here? You know what I mean? Like the, those people who would have never, you know what I mean? But like at the same time, like it's just because I'm just a normal person. I'm right. Normal girl from Idaho. I appreciate that. It's always <laughs> nice when, you know, people who I guess have quote unquote made it, if you will, kind of remember their roots, remember how it was to be undiscovered or perhaps that hidden gem of Idaho we were talking about. And uh, you're one of those people you could have easily said, "Mm, never heard of this guy, not going to be on that podcast. So uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. It's always appreciated. So thank you for that. You're awesome. And just to tap into this just a little more, like I had a job years ago working up at ESPN, um, but I was doing into in the studio room, like all the graphics and stuff like that. That's the most I've ever gotten close to like interviews. So I used to interview people my first five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten episodes, whatever. And I was learning on the fly. I did not really know how to interview people. I just kept asking questions that I wanted to know, which was the whole point of this podcast. I'd go back, I'd listen to my interviews and be like, 
okay, I got to fix these few things or some of that's a little choppy. I got to work on that. But mm -hmm. do you ever go back and like watch your videos and see how you perform? Yeah, I get so excited to do that. I, um, I remember, so my, when I came to San Diego, my coach, she's like an incredible sprint coach and she was a two-time Olympian heptathlete. So it was just, it's such a perfect little marriage, but uh, I remember she, when I first got here, she's like, you hurdle like a heptathlete. That's exactly. And she said, it's so dry. And just like, just like that, you hurdle like a heptathlete. And I was like, that's rude. You know what I mean? And, uh, and she'd always be like, I would do something. She'd be like, that's cute. And I'm like, rude. You know what I mean? Um, but it is so funny to like, look back at all the things that I've learned and like, look at back at like how I used to do things. And I totally see what she means now. Like, oh my gosh, I used to hurdle like a heptathlete, you know? and uh kind of things like watching myself run and i'm like oh like that is cute <laughs> so it's just like it's funny and it's it's a uh, it's fun to like see your progression over the years and stuff like that it's really cool before we wrap this up a little bit later i want to get to maybe a few tips and tricks that you can help oh. me run um i want to kind of like lift the curtain here get a little behind the scenes i know you brought mental health we'll hold mm -hmm. off on that for just a moment because i know you're launching a program i'm excited to hear about that um, let's talk physical first. Um, what does like your week look like as far as practices? And then I would love to even know more about diet and nutrition and stuff like that. Yeah. So my, uh, when I'm in season right now, I'm in off season. So I just like, I'm just like hanging just out like, like this is the best. Um, it's, it's so funny because I think a lot of people, um, when they work out like crazy and then they stop working out, they're kind of like, they kind of get like, and see, and they're like, okay, okay, okay. I'm not like that at all. I'm just like, I know what I, my next year is about to look like and how uh -huh. much I'm going to be doing. Like, I'm just going to like cool down and chill out. So, um, but, uh, when I'm in season, so this is going to be my first year. I talked to my coach and we're going to be doing two a days, um, for our, for our fall training, which is going to be super interesting. So it's going to be from like, from eight to eight to 10, and then it'll be from, you know, 12 to three kind of a thing. Wow. And we'll be, we'll be doing that. But my longest clocked time is nine and a half hours. Um, and I will be forthright and say that that's including like, you know, I have seven different track events. So we did probably three or four different events, like technique, technical stuff. Um, um, maybe we did like a running workout, then we had weight training and then I had to go to physical therapy. Right. So there were a lot of things that ensued within that, but I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, I went and did an entire nine and a half hour day. I remember I looked at my watch and I was like, wow. And I showed my coach and I think I had burned like 2,400 calories or something <laughs> like that. And she was like, if that was me, I would be so excited to go eat everything that I could find. Right. Um, right. I know it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But yeah, it was just like so wild to see, uh, like all the progress, like watching on my watch being like, holy cow, like I, yeah. I've had a day, I've had a day for sure. So, but, um, sometimes those like tough days, you know, a lot of people think like, oh my goodness, like I, I don't know how you do that. And I do want to always make clear that I do have a lot of nine hour days, seven, six, eight, like all that. But usually what I do, the way that I break it up is I go heavy, heavy off. So my Wednesdays are nothing but like, I'll maybe go to physical therapy, do some like physical therapy stuff, but it's like an hour. So it's nothing crazy. And then we go heavy, heavy off off. So I train four days a week, but it is hard. It's like intense. I train really, really hard. Um, but then I give myself all the recovery, mental recovery, physical recovery that I could possibly need. Um, and I think that that's like been key for me to be able to get the work in. Because if you think about a heptathlon, um, a day I've had a 12 hour day during a heptathlon. Now we're only doing four events during that 12 hours. So it's a lot of downtime, but when you are in competition and a lot of people probably who have competed before understand that you're still like here, mm -hmm. even if you're laying down, like you're still like, I'm in the middle of competition, right? It is hard to get that parasympathetic to kick in and you are, you can hear your, feel your heartbeat and hear your heartbeat. So it is important that we have long days, um, like that. Cause a lot of people are like, Holy cow, that's too much. But at the same time, like we need to be able to be prepared to 
have those long days for competition. So that's why I train like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually, I love it because I know that on Monday, like when it's Monday, I know I have Monday and Tuesday to kill it, crush it. And then I get Wednesday off. So it's almost like it's a two day week, you know what I mean? And then I get another two day week. So it's actually like a really great schedule. I always say like, I highly recommend people take two days, at least two days off a week and have the, one of them be Wednesday, one of them to be Sunday, because if you don't have to work five days in a row, um, that that's a good day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's, you're never going to hate Mondays. So you're going to be like, Oh yeah, I, I could do this all day. Let's go. So yeah. That, that's a good point. A recovery and relaxation is my worst habit. Like I can't, I don't sit still very well. When I, I did an episode of VO2 Max a few weeks ago and the follow up and my results and everything, she's like, you didn't recover very well. You don't <laughs> sit still. I was like, yeah, that's my biggest problem. So it's good yeah. to hear. And I, I think like something, cause um, I used to be like that too. Um, and I talk about this in the program that we'll talk about in the future, in, in a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, it's really important to bake in your rest into your program, because especially for people like I was like that too. You're like that. Like we don't like to sit still. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't bake, bake it in um, and you do end up kind of like falling off of your routines, it's really hard to get back on them because you know what it takes you know that you're probably not going to stop for a long time. Whereas if you have it baked in to your, your program, your system, I mean, um, that's, that's like, it's, you're, you're not taking any time off because this is part of the program, right. Kind of a thing. So. Yeah. I, my mentality, I guess was always kind of like, if you want to see progress push harder. So it's almost like letting off the gas to do nothing is almost like counterintuitive but you're mm. actually benefiting from doing that. So yeah. it's just a, it's a, it's a, well, mental... when we physically, when we work, we break the muscle and when we rest, we build the muscle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can continue to break the muscle. Good for you. But like, when is it going to build back up? Yeah. Like, isn't that what we want? Don't we want the muscle to build, but no, we, do. we have to let it do it. <laughs> we do. When do you go to sleep? So usually it just depends. Um, so it depends on like what time I'm trying to wake up because I, we, we run in 90 minute sleep cycles as humans. And again, I talk about this in my program a little bit more deeply. And so, um, you want to try to get at least five. Um, I try to get at least five to six, seven sleep cycles, which is either seven and a half, nine or 10 and a half hours, which is a lot. And I totally get that. And I usually don't do 10 and a half unless I'm coming off of like I just had like two nine and a half in a row kind of a thing, but I usually just try, depending on what time I'm trying to wake up in the morning, um, I just uh, plan accordingly. So you've said the program a few times, let's dive into it. Um, okay. I've done multiple episodes on mental health and anxiety. And uh, I love this because as you know, it's been a hot topic now, I say for the last few years, and it's great that we're uncovering a lot of this. And I'm genuinely curious to know one about your program and two about your anxiety and how you've been able to, we'll say overcome, because I'm sure it's still something you continue to work on. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Amazing. So, I mean, I'll try to give like, kind of like an, an elevator up and down about like my journey. Uh, basically I talked a little bit about, I had really bad anxiety, performance anxiety, and that's actually why I decided to go pro. But what I didn't realize is I thought just the more I did it the better it would get and the more less stressed I would be about it and the less fear I would have around it. And that just wasn't the case. I mean, year after year, after year, after year, after year, I was still just having debilitating anxiety. Like I never had one competition where I didn't have a full blown panic attack, not one. And it was horrible. Oh my gosh. It was just the worst thing ever. Like what, and what, I, what would cause, like, what are you excited? What are you anxious about? Like winning the race or performing yeah. well? Wonderful question, you know, and I think that um, what happened was in 2019 um, indoor, I had a full blown panic attack and I was sitting in a beautiful silver medal position, like easy silver, let's go after it. You just sort of finish to do that. And I got so much anxiety um, that I actually ended up pulling my hamstring, couldn't finish, boom, done. And I was so upset because I knew that the hamstring pulled wasn't because I was unhealthy 
physically the hamstring pull was because I was so stressed that my muscles were tight and that I couldn't relax and it caused me to tighten up and pull my hamstring like that's what it was Mm -hmm. and I was just breaking down I remember my parents were there um and afterwards I told them I was like I'm not going to feel like this anymore and I don't think I don't know if they were like are you done like are you quitting like what does that mean but what happened was I went home and I just started asking questions I asked my social media I asked every single person that I had ever known I asked any coach that I'd ever talked to, I would like text my coaches from before and all that. And I would just talk to them about like, have you ever had performance anxiety? Why did it happen? How did it occur? How did you get rid of it? Kind of a thing. And somebody once one, one answer kind of came to me when I was asking and it was super weird because they weren't really answering my question. They were, they were more just talking about what were they talking about? They were saying something like, um, they were talking about how some people have anxiety, some people don't. And I was like, yeah, like so-and-so she doesn't ever have anxiety. She just like, and he, and he, he was like, well, look, she, that makes sense for me because I knew her when she was in college and she's aloof to the world. And I was like, okay. And he's like, she doesn't put her, her, um, value on sport. And it was like this, like, what was that? Mm -hmm. You know? And I realized that like my value as not just as an athlete, because that makes sense. Like your value as an athlete depends on how you do, but my value as a person (laughs) was dependent on my performance. Yeah. And I didn't realize that before, but I remember, so like something like my my parents would say, my coaches would say, they'd be like, you have a heart of a champion. Like if I would win like a competition or whatever, um, in college, I'd always been told like, oh, you just, you have a heart of a champion. And looking back on it, like when people would say that to me, or like, you are just, you're just like a winner, like that kind of thing, like instantly, like, I didn't realize that, but like, I'd be like, what if it was a fluke though? What if I'm not, what if I don't have a heart? Imposter like, syndrome. Yeah. yeah. What if that was just lucky? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And so, uh, it kind of like spiraled into this space of like, everybody thinks I have the heart of a champion and I'm about to prove them all wrong because I don't think that that's actually the case. And it was turning into this, like, if I win, like, okay, like I, I'm okay. And nobody found me out. We, we, we snuck through. And if I lose, then, um, I'm not, I don't have any value. I just like lost all of my value as a person. And it was weird because that was like the first big aha moment when it came to uh, track and field. And then um, I worked on that. And in my mind, I was like, oh, like I fixed it. (laughs) I fixed my anxiety. Like it's crazy. And do I'll be honest, it did help. I didn't have any more panic attacks. That was my last panic attack after that. So it helped significantly. But what I will say is like, I never had any wins. Like I didn't I didn't win as a professional athlete. Like I, I would take, I had taken bronze and I had made world championships and I would, I would take like a silver every once in a while, but like, I didn't have any like gold medals on my, um, on my roster. And, uh, I remember I didn't make the team. I didn't make the Olympics in 2021 and it was devastating because I made the Olympics in 2019. I, I mean, I made the world championships in 2019 and I, it's the same process to make the Olympics. So in my mind, I was like, and I'll make it next year too. Like, it's fine. And then pandemic happened. I got ankle surgery. I did. I jacked up my ankle, got ankle surgery, but in my mind, I was still like, I got this, like, I got this and I didn't make it. And I was devastated. So, so hold on, real quick, if the, if the Olympics were in 2020, you would have performed with the Olympics, but because it got pushed by you, you didn't Not necessarily because I still had to qualify the way okay. that you would have had to qualify before. And I just didn't make it right. Like uh, you have to take top three at the Olympic trials. And I had taken top three in 2019. Um, And then um, I actually hurt my ankle going into 2020 season, but I was like, it's fine. I'm not going to get surgery. But then the, the pandemic happened and then I had to, I ended up getting surgery. So Mm. that's what that was. I mean, my ankle was jacked anyways, either way, but, um, but like, yeah. I mean, I didn't make it. I just thought I would like in my mind, I, I was very much like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be an Olympian. Like everything's going to happen and it's going to be awesome. Didn't happen. 
And it put me into this like spiraling depression. And it was because I had forgotten not to put my worth onto my performance again. And I had to do a lot of work. And I remember a long time ago, somebody told me, you know, hey, how do I get started on my mental journey? And like, honestly, I had no idea because when they talk about like a mental mental health or mental toughness or mental training, like, what does that look like? You know what I mean? Like, not, like nobody knows what that looks like. And I had talked to, I had, I had been working with sports psychologists for a while and I had a ton of like, I had a mental trainer. I had like a lot of, but like, we didn't have like a pro, there was no like program. There was no curriculum. Mm -hmm. And it was just like random exercises. Like try this exercise, you know, now try this exercise, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, but when it comes to my physical training, I mean, there's a program in place, like Monday, we do this Tuesday, we do this. And it's like very like efficient. And so I was like, okay, um, how could I be more intentional about my mental training? And so I kind of started taking all of the things that I've learned and I put them together. And um, this next year, I mean, I made Team USA in 2022 for indoor and I was like, this close from my gold, my bronze medal in the in the world championships. So, so close. Um, and then I ended up winning three gold medals and I had never won that year. It was my most winningest year of the season. And I, you know, I got a personal best and I, I finally felt like I learned what it took to win. And it was just being able to put this mental training curriculum into place. And so I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna share this. Um, this was so big for me. And I think it could help a lot of people. I wish I oh, had yeah. this when I was younger. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So the mental training program is called 30 days with Shari and it's 30 days, um, which is, that's why it's saying though it's 30 days. And I take you along with me to do mental training. So we talk every day. We have like a little podcast that we set up where I just share like a really fun tool. And we do like a little bit of like guidance mantras and like all that kind of stuff um, every day. And then I give you a challenge every day for you to kind of practice the tool that I taught you in the morning podcast um, and uh, for you to kind of internalize it, use it for yourself. And then we do a workout together. And um, in the workout, we talk about the tool and we practice kind of like that mind and body connection. So um, teaching you kind of how to not give up and use the tool to, you know, you want to stop during this workout, but you're not going to because we're going to use the tool that we use today and all that kind of stuff and we do that 30 times and it's all different like it's all those random things that all my sports psychologists and mental trainers would give me to do but now it's all really intentional so my master's degree and my bachelor's is in education and so I use the typical like school curriculum to be able to kind of like in math, you have to learn one plus one is two before you can learn two times two is four. So I put it into a very digestible way. So it's not just like, holy cow, this is like level 20. Like you don't get to level 20 till day 20, you know, mm. kind of a thing. So I love this. This is I'm awesome. So I, I love a lot of things about this. The thing that I'm thinking about the most is how you've actually lived this and mm -hmm. it's tried and true and it's worked for you, for the elite of the elite. And it should work for someone else as well. I love having a coach where it's like, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been there before. I can relate to you. And that's who you yeah. are. Um, how does someone sign up for this? Yeah. So you can go to Shari Hawkins. My name is spelled a little weird. C-H-A-R-I, Shari, shariHawkins.com. And uh, it'll give you all the information that you need. Um to, uh, to get started. And it's going to be, honestly, it's going to be really fun. It's so potent. I mean, through my, my career, I mean, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on mental coaches and, uh, and sports psychologists. And I mean, I even shared with my current sports psychologist I have now, I like shared him, with him a lot of the stuff that I talk about. And he was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So, I mean, it's, every single time that I listened to it, like re-listen to it when I was creating it, when I was writing it down, a lot of these lessons that I have, like when I wrote them down, I would be like one of the lessons I was writing, I was making the lesson, I was planning the day and like talking about like what we would talk about, the points and all that kind of stuff. And I was on my way to um, indoor 
national championships. And by the time I landed, um, my parents were like, Hey, how are you? And I was like, I'm going to win. And they were like, okay. And I was like, no, like I'm going to win. Like I can feel it. I'm going to win. Like, I, like, I don't know. And it was just the, it, this program has just lit me up from the inside. And I, I mean, I really hope that it lights every, you guys up too. Like it's, I hope you love it. And at the end of the day, like, it's going to be like, it's super fun. I tell track stories and I give you just like challenges for you to, you know, work on your own personal development, work on your sport. And then, I mean, who doesn't want to do just like a, a quick, like five minute hit seven minute abs, like all of that kind of stuff. Like those are all such, it's all really great anyways. So regardless on if you're even still competing, I feel like it's a really fun, um, mental training, mental toughness training, kind of a thing, like getting, I think it's just like a goal getter. You know what I mean? Like mm. go get your goal as much as you can. And, uh, this, this program can kind of help you do so. 30 days with Shari. I've enjoyed mm. my 30 plus minutes so far. <laughs> with you. I will say you do a really good job. You radiate like positivity. Thank um, you. it is, you know, positivity kind of like attracts. And that's why like, I keep watching your videos. You're smiling. You make it seem easy. You make it seem fun. And I can see this course working really well for so many people. I know anxiety has just gone through the roof, especially now with the pandemic and the coronavirus and everything. And so I think this is going to be super helpful. And I think you're a great person to do it. And I'm happy Thank you. that you're doing it. Um, I know I have you for just a little bit longer. Um, I know you said I posted a quote yesterday because I post quotes on my Instagram occasionally when something sticks with me. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a video of Kobe Bryant saying um, when he makes a contract with himself, it's a non-negotiable. He shows up even when he doesn't want to, he wants to quit, but he made a contract with himself. What are things that you do or what are things that you tell yourself when you're just like, I just don't feel like it today. I want to quit. I want to go home. How do you push through that? So actually, uh, the day one uh, the, of 30 Days with Shari, we talk about accountability. And, um, you know, anytime, anytime that you um, have a meeting with somebody, like we both showed up today because we had a meeting and we were going to show up. Like we weren't, we weren't just going to not show up. If you have a lunch meeting, if you have work, if you have practice, and you're meeting somebody at a specific time. I mean, we respect that person so much that we're not going to not show up, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's just how we are. But at the end of the day, like how come we don't have more accountability for our own selves, right? Um, and I think, you know, day one of the program, the great thing is I don't just talk to you about accountability. Usually I'll give you like three steps to being more accountable for yourself, like step one, step two, and step three. And so that you can like recreate it every single day. Um, and it's easy. And if you fall off, I mean, I think the biggest thing is if you fall off to just give yourself grace um, and be like, I'm a big, like, I talk to myself a lot. And if I wake up and I was, I wanted to wake up early and I slept in, I say, like, I genuinely say to myself, like, hey, like, it's absolutely like, I don't want you to feel bad about this. Like, there's no need to like beat yourself up about it. Like it already happened. But like, at the end of the day, like, um, remember feeling like just a little bit like, oh man, I wish I would have like next time, um, let's change it to like, I'm glad I did kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so like, cause I don't know, I don't love like a dive all in. Cause I I've been there. I've been to that like obsessive level of being like, never let yourself down because it's like, then when the, when, if for ever some reason we do, we just like so hard on ourselves and we feel like we're so worthless and there's people who like are perfect in their endeavors. And like, for me, I think it's fabulous that we're imperfect humans um, because the lowest parts of ourselves, I mean, without me not making the, um, the Olympics, I wouldn't have had this program. I wouldn't have created it. it. It just wouldn't have happened. And so like some of our lowest times where we felt like we left, let ourselves down can breed like some of the best things and like the biggest learnings. And so as long as you, I would say like when it comes to like accountability, as long as you're willing to continue to try and you give yourself grace, like I think you're on the right track. 
Yeah, it sounds like I can really benefit from this because I am very <clears throat> black and white, if you will. If I make mm-hmm. up my mind on a goal mm-hmm. or something I want to achieve, it is yeah. just like from A to B, straight line. Yeah. And I like to I like to say like I'm I'm a light switch, so it's either completely on and it doesn't stop, or it's off and I can't get up again. Mm-hmm. And it's like I need to learn how to use a dimmer switch for some things. <laughs> I really need to learn. Help me. To help me, Shari. Help mm-hmm. me. It sounds like, have you read the book Atomic Habits at all? Yes. Okay. I, I'm seeing yes, some similarities. Definitely. I think you're going to, yeah, I definitely see it. That, that book was a, was a game changer for me. So I imagine people taking your course is going to be a life changer. I believe possible. it's, I believe it's day nine when we talk about habits and I mentioned that book and the things that I learned from it. And then I also, I add in like my own little twist of like how to really solidify a habit um, for myself and how how like it has really helped. So Your yeah, we talked about a lot deal. of stuff. That's yeah, it's the real be, deal. It's really cool. It's gonna be really cool. Do you know what's so fun is I'll continue to read books even now that the program is literally like created and made. And a lot of the things I learn, I learned just kind of by like living, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where a lot of lessons come from is just us living life, man. And sometimes I'll, I'll listen to a podcast or, um, I'll read a new book and I'll get so much confirmation. Like they'll talk about something I talked about in my class and I'm like, in the, in the program. And I'm like, Oh, like that's so validating. So it's, it's going to be super fun. It's a really great program. I think people are going to love it. That's awesome. And you're probably going to gather feedback too, over the years from people and how they respond to things. Right. So yeah, I hope so. And I hope that like, eventually it just gets into a space where, you know, people have been like, Hey, like, I didn't really love this one. And then I can reevaluate and be like, okay, like, how can we make it better? You know, right. how can we evolve it? How can we make it even better? And hopefully people are like, this changed me. And I'm like, yay. Cause it changed me too. When does this launch? This launches September 19th. Um, so I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a really great September 19th. Um, it's so crazy because, um, with everything, with everything that you do, right. Um, you don't, you want to get it done like months in advance and you're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like ready to go. But it's like all all the time. It's always like, you know, down to the wire. Like, is it going to work? Is it going to, and you just have to say like, it's going to work. Like we put it in, you got to trust. And even this program, it's, it's coming down to that, but it's been so much fun. And, um, we've created just such a really fun program. I'm really happy with it. It's going to work. It, I mean, it really doesn't seem like you have the personality to let it not work. I mean, from everything that you've kind of described so far in our conversation about, you know, choosing this path in life, your parents not being sure, but it's like, you got the vision, you got the vision for this. You clearly are going to make this work and it's going to benefit so many people. I'm, I'm like, I'm proud of you. I just met you oh. and I'm already super proud of you. I think this is, this is wonderful. This is, I'm super excited. I'm going to look into this myself because there's, times that I need to give myself a little more grace. Like I said, I'm, I'm very black and white. There are times that I kind of hold myself maybe perhaps a little too accountable, or if I get disappointed in myself that I didn't make something happen, or I'm not seeing the results that I wanted. So, you know, I, I, I'm turning 40 here in two days. It's never too late. Happy birthday. It's, thank you. It is never too late to make life changes. Um, I think that would be a huge one for me. So, yeah. And it's, I also, you know, it's never, my biggest thing in just in life in general is like, life is too important to take too seriously. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, like I think putting continuing, that's why I, I always say like kind of determination and consistency, like that's where it's like, really, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to always like, be on all the time. And so, like, that's a lesson I feel like I had to kind of learn the hard way. Um, because I remember like, I would have just the most ridiculous morning routine, the most ridiculous night routine. And my night routine was five hours, by the way. Um, and it was, it was like, it was very like, okay, I'm Norma teching and then I'm rolling out and then I'm doing core stability exercises. Then I'm doing glute stability exercises. And then I'm journaling for this long. And it just like, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was so much, um, it burnt me out. And, uh, 
it's like, there's better ways, you know what I mean? We can still be efficient. We can still have fun. We can still get the things we want to get done, done. Um, and we can also still be human. It's still okay to be human. Oh, that's great. Great advice. And I know I got to let you go here in a moment. If you don't mind, I got a couple quick questions that I want to ask you. Um, today I am going to the track. I'm going to do a workout. Okay. There's a few questions I want to ask. What is a drill and or exercise that is numero uno on your list to do when you want to increase speed and or in endurance? If you are somewhat new to running, I would definitely say like the A skip is probably a uh, number one, mostly because it, pro it keeps your hips tall. It keeps your shoulders down and back and then it keeps your knees like up and you're landing right underneath you. And like, those are a lot of things that people don't do naturally, but when they do, when they do drills, like a lot, like they not your body naturally adjusts. So when you're doing drills, you're giving yourself little, little uh, muscle memory movements. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's so funny because so many people say that that's actually helped them with their shin splints. It's helped with their knee pains. And like, that's weird. Why would they do that? Cause it's not a PT exercise. But what it does is it just, when you do them over and over again, like, and you get the rhythm down and you, your body feels like it's in correct position. Then you start running your body's naturally just like, Oh, like let's apply that a little bit into our running. And so then you're running with more efficiency. You're running a little bit better. And, um, I mean, efficient running is easier and a lot less stress on your body. So uh, I would yeah. say that that would be like the number one drill, I would say probably. How long should that drill last? Oh my gosh. Um, well, usually when I do drills, um, I do them like, I do like an A skip for uh, 20 meters there and back, B skip 20 meters there and back, okay. C skip 20 meters there and back. Um, and usually I'm just going through like my, my drill cycle. So I would say my whole warm up is like five minutes. Okay. It's really like, it's not, it's not that crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, even if you just slow it down and like, really like, okay, like core is activated, shoulders are down, hips are tall. And like, you start just by walking with your knees, like, walk, like a walking and then you a skip, boom, like that. Um, you make it look so freaking easy in your video. <laughs> even when we're doing that, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, like those are, those are just next level and they're really helpful when it comes to running. And then the other thing I would say is activating your glutes, um, with like, just like a glute band, like, and I'm talking like when I'm, when I'm like, not really feeling like doing my whole circuit, my whole like glute circuit, I'll just walk a uh, side for 10 steps side for 10 with a, with a band around my knees mm -hmm. and I'll walk side walk like little, like little, like, doo, doo, yep. doo, 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 you know, and yep. then I'll turn and I'll just walk with the band around my, and then I'll walk backwards with the band around my knees and it just really burns your glutes. But what it's doing, it's really activating those glutes. Cause a lot of times when we run, our glutes are actually shut off and our glutes are our biggest muscle to activate when we run. And when they're shut off, what happens is we, then our body goes to, okay, what else can we use? We can use our hamstrings or we can use our quads. Oh. And then like when our glutes are active, our knees, when we run our knees cave in like a little valgus. Okay. And when that's happening, um, we're causing, I mean, we're going to just cause so many horrible, horrible things, but if we're stable in our glutes, we're going to be a lot more stable in the rest of our body. So I would say like for form, I would say a skip and for health, I would say activating those glutes. All right. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it today. And one final question is that mm -hmm. I tend to, when I run, I notice I get shoulder tightness like right here. And I've seen videos where you've kind of said, perhaps like squeeze your fingers or something like put some ten tension in your hands. Right, is right. that right? Yeah. So, um, like to be able to like, cause I, I tend to, uh, I used to say I wear my traps and my shoulders like their earrings. <laughs> um, and, uh, like the biggest thing for me has been just, uh, like a lot of people say like, Oh, pretend you're holding a potato chip mm -hmm. because they're, they want you to be like relaxed in your hands. But I say like crush the potato chip, um, and, and your wrist and your hands are super tight, but like everything else is actually kind of like loosens up and put 
all the tension there mm -hmm. so that your shoulders can be nice and dropped. And because if you're trying, like you'll, if you squeeze this, this is how you'll run. So if you squeeze this and then move your shoulder elbows back, there's like, if your shoulders are tight, I literally, and this is squeezed because if your shoulders are tight and yeah. this is loose, you can still actually do this. Right. But if you're short, if you're, if you squeeze, like you can't really move. So it's going to force you to stay down. If you put your elbows back. I hope I don't look like that when I run, but I probably do. Some of us do. <laughs> you never know. I've seen it and I've seen it on myself too. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But well, Shari, we'll have fun is... at the track today. Yeah, this is, I, I, I will. I'm going to bring everything that you just said and your videos with me. I'm going to get, going to keep pushing forward, keep trying to increase my times, my speed. I don't consider myself a runner, but I'm trying Maybe. it anyways. But uh, Shari, this has been awesome. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Um, like I said, you radiate positivity. Your videos are awesome. Before you head off, please remind people where they can find you. Yeah, so um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Um, everything is pretty much underscore Shari Hawkins, except for Twitter is Sharhawk9. And it's because I was number nine in volleyball. So that's probably why that was. Um, and then I'm also, I'm on YouTube. And then you can also go to shariHawkins.com to check out 30 Days with Shari. And do it too. And do it because it is very well done. The videos are, you have like, you must have like a production team and everything. Like, you know, you're legit. It is very we definitely, legit. We definitely, uh, we definitely pulled out some stops for this one. It was really fun. It was like, it was super fun for my, for my team and I to create. And it was really, really cool. Um, and it's been a year um, of planning and kind of like putting all of this in. So hopefully it all comes together the way it's supposed to. And it is like, I would say that it is like a challenge. Like it's, it's going to be challenging and uh, like it's, but it's going to be, it's going to be really fun. This is your new baby and everything that you just mentioned will be in the show notes, including your course. So if you do want to Thank sign you. up, I'm going to put your website in there, just scroll down give it a click and go work with Shari. It sounds absolutely incredible. So mm -hmm. once again, thank you so much for your time and thank you for just being a normal human being. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. It was awesome. Thanks Shari.